Percy and Toby were worried. Thomas's recent accident had caused a great deal of trouble, and Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them with important news. Here is Daisy, the diesel rail car, who has come to help while, while Thomas is indisposed. Please, sir, will she go when Thomas comes back, sir? That depends, said Sir Topham Hatt. Meanwhile, uh, however long she stays, I hope you will both make her welcome and comfortable. Yes, sir, we'll try, sir, said the engines. Good. Run along now and show her the shed. She will want a rest after her journey. Daisy was not easy to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. This is dreadfully smelly. I'm highly sprung. And anything smelly is bad for my best words. Next, they tried the carriage shed. said Daisy, but whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie, Clarabelle, and Henrietta, who were most offended. We won't stay here to be insulted, they fumed. Percy and Toby had to take them away and spend and half the night soothing their hurt feelings. Engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. She tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the passengers. I am the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabelle now. The passengers waited for Daisy to start, but she didn't. She saw that a milk van was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, she said her driver, you, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with freight cars. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense. And said her driver, come on now, back down. Daisy lurched backwards. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, she said, and stopped. Everyone argued with her, but it was no, no use. It's fitter's order, she said. What is? My fitter's a very nice man. He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung, and pulling is bad for your swerves. So, though, so that's how it is, finished Daisy. Stuff and nonsense, said the station master. I can't understand, said the shunter. Whatever made Sir Topham Hatt send us such a feeble... Feeble, feeble, spluttered Daisy. Let me stop, stop arguing, arguing, grumbled the passengers. We're late already. So they uncoupled the van and Daisy purred away, feeling very pleased with herself. She could now enjoy her journey. That's a good story, she chuckled. I'll do just what work I choose and no more. But she said it herself.